And welcome back to High School Physics Explained. My name is Paul, and for those who have been following me, you may have noticed I've been absent for a while since I've been struggling with laryngitis, but I'm back. Today, we're going to talk about the strong nuclear force. Right from the get-go, I want to make it absolutely clear that I am going to be talking from a high school physics explained perspective. So I'm not going to go into the standard model. So if you're looking for higher level, looking at quantum mechanics, looking at quarks and leptons and gluons and so forth, this is not your video. But if you're in high school and you want to know a little bit more about the strong nuclear force, this is it. But before we go and talk about the strong nuclear force, I just want to give you a quick review um, in the latter part of the 19th century, in the beginning of the 20th century, physics was in great change. Before J.J. Thomson's work, the understanding, of course, was the atom was the smallest indivisible particle. And at the time, physicists basically understood two types of forces. One was the gravitational force, which is at that time was seen as a force at a distance. And also electrostatic forces where electricity was involved. At this stage, of course, the electron hadn't been discovered, so the actual reason for the electrostatic force wasn't understood. But of course, in 1897, then J.J. Thompson had done the experiments to determine the fact that there exists a particle which was 1800 times smaller than the smallest known atom, hydrogen, at the time. He discovered the electron. And so that gave us a little bit more understanding of charge and electrostatics. Further on in the early part of the 20th century, we have Rutherford, who by this stage had was able to manipulate alpha particles, which were large, massive charged particles. He was able to come up with a model of the atom that was made up of bits. That is, we have a strong nucleus uh, where we, the positive charge existed and we have also electrons that are in orbit. Now, of course, that model developed over time and I have a series of videos that you can explore. But in essence, we've now gone down from atom being the most fundamental into particle to the atom being actually made up of subatomic particles. There were still some problems and, of course, Chadwick in 1932 determined this, the nature of the neutron, which was another subatomic particle that resided in the nucleus. And so we have a mixture of positive charged particles, which we now know as protons, and neutral particles, which we know as neutrons, which actually make up our nucleus. And so here we have a model, a very simplified model, of the nucleus. And of course, today I'm going to be talking about the strong nuclear force. I'm only interested in the nucleus at this stage. But the real question is, is what holds all these particles together? I mean, even if we just concentrate on the protons themselves, we know that they are positively charged. And electrostatic forces, we know, means that if they are like charges, they should repel. So to look at that a bit further, I want to have a look at just two protons here. And I want to look at two forces that we are aware of. One is gravitation and one is the electrostatics. And we know that gravity is a force that is attractive only. And we know that a force of electrostatics, in the case of two protons, is repulsive. So what are the forces, let's say, between these two protons at a separation, in this case, of 1.3 by 10 to the negative 15 meters? This is commonly known as a femtometer. Now, if I were to work out the force between these two charges, I use, of course, the formula about electrostatics, which is Q1, Q2 over R squared. And if I calculate all this out, I won't do this now on the screen, but I get a force of 136.3 newtons. That is, at that separation, these two protons are experiencing a repulsive force of 136 approximately newtons, which is quite large. If I then determine the force in terms of gravity, using again the same mass of the proton which is given here, I'm going to get a value of approximately 1.09 by 10 to the power of negative 34 newtons. So what we're saying here is, is that when we have two protons at a particular distance, it is really obvious that the force of electrostatics, the repulsive force, due to the fact that they're the same charge, is fantastically bigger than the gravity force that holds it together. And yet we know that the protons do stick together. So what is the force at play here that overcomes this strong force of repulsion here? Because clearly gravity is having no effect whatsoever, in, even though it's attractive, it's so small. So in the mid-1930s, after Chadwick's discovery of the neutron, 
there came a development of an idea of a force that exists within the nucleus that overcomes the electrostatic forces of repulsion between the protons. And so we come up with this idea of this strong nuclear force that holds the nucleus together. But there are a couple of things we want to talk about. Now I have two protons here represented by the red balls and a single neutron. And the first thing I want to highlight is that the strong nuclear force that we're going to be talking about is not connected with charge. So in other words, that although these two charges of the protons are identical and repulsive, the strong nuclear force is not dependent on the charges. So actually what we're talking about is that the force that exists between these protons and neutrons, or collectively known as nucleons, exists also between protons and neutrons, and neutrons and neutrons. And so there's no reference here in terms of charge. The second thing we need to t identify is that the strong nuclear force is actually dependent on the distance between the nucleons. And so that's actually going to affect two things. We're going to see that it affects it in terms of its direction. The distance can determine whether this force is repulsive or attractive. And secondly, the strength of the strong nuclear force is dependent about the size of the distance between them. So in other words, the strong nuclear force ends up actually being a very short range force. That is, it only acts at a certain distance. Beyond a certain distance, the force that we attribute to the strong nuclear force is negligible and the electrostatic forces start to take over. That becomes really significant to coming to a basic understanding of radioactive decay. So let's explore this in terms of a graph. So let's start by looking at the electrostatic forces that exist in terms of the separation of our protons. And so that graph is going to look something like this. It's going to be off the scale, of course, over here, and it's going to decrease gradually. Now, it's by an inverse square law, and so, of course, it decreases. But at all times is that the electrostatic forces are repulsive. Very strong, of course, when the separation is really small. As the distance increases, the strength of that decreases by an inverse square. But what if I wanted to now draw the actual effect of the strong nuclear force? And I'm going to do that in yellow. Well, that's going to look something like this. It's going to be really strongly repulsive initially. But it very quickly, about one femtometer, it's going to actually end up being zero. And then it's going to, at that distance, become strongly attractive. But that doesn't last long. Eventually what happens is, is that the actual value and strength diminishes practically to zero once we get to separation of about 2.5 by 10 to the negative 15 meters. So let's explore that a little bit further. Remember, we now have a number of forces. The first one, of course, is the Coulomb force. It's a long range force. So it applies always, even though it is weak when it goes to further distances. Then what we have, of course, is our strong nuclear force, which is very short range. Now, let's explore this as to how that might impact our protons. So if our protons are under one femtometer apart, they're experiencing two repulsive forces at the same time. They cannot coexist together. The forces are just too strong. And the values are here up to 10 to the power of four newtons over here on the right hand side of the graph you'll notice that the strong nuclear force at this case is attractive still but it is extremely weak so weak in fact is that the electrostatic forces definitely hold sway they are by far the greatest force at work here it's repulsive and therefore the protons repel away from each other and that's something that you are probably already aware but you'll notice at this junction over here, something different happens. What we have here is that we have this strong nuclear force, and I haven't drawn it totally correctly here. By rights, this graph should actually dip down a little bit lower. But the strong nuclear force is by far stronger than the electrostatic forces. So at this point, the net force on our nucleons is not a repulsive, but attractive. Therefore, the protons actually exist quite happily together because the strong nuclear force far outweighs the actual 
and I'll make this a little bit and I'll just move this down to be more reflective to what we've got, like so, is that here we have the strong nuclear force holding it together. Now what's significant is, is that is generally the typical nucleon separation in a stable atom. Not to say that that is a coincidence, that of course is because the strong nuclear force is the strongest at that own time and therefore we note that that would contribute to why the nucleon are separated at that distance. So here's the key point again. We now have three forces at play, gravitational force, electrostatic forces and strong nuclear forces. Gravitational forces are totally ignored, they're just too weak. So now we have only two forces at play within the nucleus. We have obviously our electrostatic forces which are always repulsive and work over long distances but obviously are really strong at close distances. And then we have our strong nuclear force that is a short range force that is strongly repulsive under one femtometer very weakly attractive after two femtometers, so weak in fact that the electrostatic forces by far are larger and therefore would cause protons to separate. But at that magical level of about 1.3 femtometers, we have a strong nuclear force which is significantly larger and attractive than the electrostatic forces that are present at the time and therefore holds the nucleus together. So that gives us an understanding in general terms of strong nuclear force. Again, as is what I said at the beginning, I've given you a very simplistic version of it. The reality is that strong nuclear force is ultimately due to strong interactions between quarks. And quarks are the fundamental particles that make up protons and neutrons. And the interactions that hold them together are referred to as gluons. This is something of a further discussion in a future video with the standard model. But hopefully what this does is give you an overview of how strong nuclear force works. This becomes also important as we come to later videos where we look at nuclear decay, we look at nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explains. I hope you press subscribe and press the bell so that you get regular updates. And please like and share and drop comment if you wish. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.